Oh hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the horrible experience we had trying to get Marley out of Malaysia. I have already posted a video explaining how we got our dog from Canada to Malaysia. If you are curious about how that whole process went, I will link that in the description box below. But let me tell you, getting her out of Malaysia was a completely different experience with a lot of uh, headache, stress, and unfortunately, money involved. So, in order to get our dog out of Canada into Malaysia, we had to look at what the Malaysian government's regulations were for importing a live animal. Super easy, really self-explanatory. You have to follow the list of, re of requirements, vaccines, etc. get the right paperwork, get your dog into the country. So, with the paperwork that the Malaysian government outlined on their website, with their import documentation, we were able to get our dog into Malaysia. All of the Canadian vaccine records that we had worked to get her across the border. However, less than three months later, when we want to turn around and leave Malaysia, suddenly the very same documentation no longer works. The vaccines are seen as invalid, and they will not let us take the dog on an airplane unless we have the paperwork that is outlined by their government, which we were told by multiple pet agents, you need to treat this dog like it's a Malaysian dog, not like it's a tourist dog who's just been here on vacation. Hmm. So we were obviously not thrilled with this information and we pushed back and we contacted multiple pet agents. We contacted the same people that I had connected with to get Marley into the country. We contacted them and they also outlined the same list of requirements and said, your dog is now a Malaysian dog. You cannot export your dog with Canadian vaccine certificates. The dog has to have Malaysian vaccine certificates. We were told this multiple times by multiple people and it just didn't make any sense to us. We said, if we were here for two weeks on vacation with our pet, you're telling me we have to re-vaccinate the dog to leave? And every person said, yep, that's how it works. Um, the one person that I spoke with who, who was the same gentleman who helped us get our dog into Malaysia, he was really helpful and he gave me additional contact information for the local government agencies in Malaysia. And so I contacted them directly and I said, this is what I'm being told. I'm being told we're not allowed to get on an airplane with our dog unless we go through all of the vaccination process all over again. Can you please like confirm or deny this information? We're here on holiday. We're just here for a handful of months. We have all of her Canadian vaccine certificates. We have the records that they were signed off on by the Canadian Food Inspection Agency. We have your import permit saying that all of that documentation worked to get her into the country. Please, can you help me? And she was wonderful. And she said, no, if you have the Canadian documentation, no problem, we'll accept that to get the documentation written up on our end to get her out of the country. Perfect. So I recontacted the um, gentleman at the time who was helping me and he said, nope, can't happen. That person was wrong. And I said, I spoke with the government vet who has to sign off on all the paperwork. And they said, the Canadian documentation will be fine. They said, nope, can't help you. So then I contacted that office again and I'm like, I'm still being told that no one's gonna, like they won't proceed with helping us get Marley out of the country unless we get the Malaysian paperwork and all of those vaccine certificates. Once again, she assured me, the Canadian vaccines will be fine. You can get your dog out of Malaysia with those, no problem. I said, can you help me get in contact? Oh, oh, but then she said, but we can't work with you. You can't do this on your own. We only deal with pet agents. You must hire a pet agent, and then we will deal with the pet agent and get all the documentation in line. So that was like roadblock number one. We, I, I had the conversation with the decision maker who's gonna stamp all the paperwork and give us what we need to take the dog out of the country, but she won't actually let me go to her office with the paperwork and get everything all signed off on. Now also, when you're gonna leave the country, you have to have a final checkup at a vet. The dog has to go and have a final checkup. And so, I don't know, maybe that's part of their concern. They wanna make sure that you actually take your dog to the vet and get the right documentation. I don't know, but they would not deal with me. They would only deal with a pet agent. So I asked for some names of some pet agents and then began to go and, and call them. I, um, well, first I went back to the gentleman who had been helping me all along and he stopped responding when I said, 
I've spoken to her now twice. She said, I do not need to get my dog revaccinated. P like, please help me. He literally stopped responding. He stopped responding. We contacted six different pet agents and told them what we were told about the Canadian documentation being fine to get her the documentation she needs to leave Malaysia. And all six of them said, nope, cannot help you. So we're being told that our documentation is acceptable, but we're also being told we need a pet agent to act as an intermediary for us. And none of them are going to do the work for us because we have Canadian records. Such a frustrating experience. At the same time that all this is happening, I now we are like, now we've been clearly told you can, I said, if I show up with my dog and all this paperwork, am I going to be allowed to get on a plane? And they were like, no, your dog will not be allowed to leave the country. They will be confiscated and Marley will have to stay behind. So now we're like stuck between a rock and a hard place. So I email my veterinarian back at home and I fill them in on what's going on and I ask them for their, their, their counsel about should we revaccinate the dog? Like I was concerned about that for certain vaccines because Marley is allergic to some and has to have like a pre-treatment and then she has to be watched when she gets the one vaccine and then we give her some treatment afterwards to make sure that she's not gonna have too big of a reaction. I just didn't want her, unnecessarily getting these vaccines that she had just had less than three months prior. So after chatting with my vet, they said, your dog is fine if they need to do another rabies vaccine, but no other ones. So got that information. I also contacted the woman who had helped me from the Canadian Food Inspection Agency and told her what was going on in case she had any you know, advice from someone who's really sitting in the same seat as the woman who in Malaysia was sitting in. Maybe she would have something to add to the conversation that would be useful. Um, she was really great. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to help with our situation. And then because we were being told that we would not be able to leave the country, we contacted the Canadian embassy in Malaysia and said, please, can someone help us? We are literally being told we're stuck here because our dog needs to be re-inoculated and we're not comfortable with all of these vaccines being given to her. The Canadian embassy did get back to my husband and said, sorry, we can't help you. So. That was lovely. Through this whole process, one of the things we learned was that if we were going to have to re-vaccinate Marley with the rabies vaccine, then that would then she would not be able to travel for 21 days after that vaccine was given, even though she was just given that vaccine less than three months earlier. So we decided to go to a local veterinarian and have a conversation with her and we explained to her the situation we were in and that we were not comfortable giving our dog all of the whole series of vaccinations. She looked over all of Marley's records and said, there's no way this dog needs anything. Like she's, she's good. She has everything she needs, but I'm familiar with the export process and you do need to have the actual record from the Malaysian government in order to get your dog out of here. But maybe I can help you with that. She's like, give me a minute. I'm going to go make a phone call. So we were like, okay, help is on the way. So she contacted a pet agent that she deals with often in her practice and asked some questions and then got back. She came back into the room and she said, okay, listen, you do need to get your dog vaccinated for rabies. That's like a necessary vaccine to, for your dog to leave Malaysia, but the rest your dog doesn't need. The documentation you have should work, but just to be safe, if you'd like, we, I can, you can purchase the vaccine from us and then I'll take the sticker off of it and put it inside of the dog's vaccine certificate record. So basically we were going to get the vaccine certificate from Malaysia and it's there it's like this little booklet and inside they actually take the label off of the vaccine and stick it inside of this booklet. And that's what this agent, all these pet agents were saying we needed. So we thought about it. We actually went away for a couple days, thought about it. And the one thing that was making us um, want to do that, want to, want to approach it that way was we didn't want to continue to extend our trip. And we knew we had a 21 day wait after Marley was vaccinated. So we went back to the vet and we decided to go ahead with that plan. She, the, the dog got re-vaccinated for rabies and then we purchased the other vaccine that was required in order for her to leave the country, but the vet did not actually inoculate the dog with it. Instead, we put the sticker inside of the certificate. I was so thankful that she was willing to work with it, that she was being logical, that she was looking at Marley's health records and saying, you don't want to give your dog another one of these. It was so wonderful to have somebody like that helping us. Now, before you think, oh, it was just a money grab that she made you pay for that, the entire trip to the vet, the, the two um, 
vaccinations, the once over that she needed to be given, the meeting with her, all the things ended up costing us less than a cost for a bag of dog food back home. So it was definitely not a money grab. Um, we were shocked both times we paid at the vet how completely different the pricing is there versus back in Canada. But that's another story for another day. So what we did was then we said, can we have your pet agent's contact information? Maybe your pet agent that you're chatting with can be more helpful than the ones we've been trying to deal with. So I reached out to her pet agent and explained to her what was going on. And I told her I, my pet agent that I was working with to get the dog into the country has stopped responding to me and isn't helping me and has told me I must get the dog revaccinated. And I, and I told her kind of our situation. I did not tell her that we have the vaccine card in hand and that Marley has now been vaccinated for rabies because I, that was gonna be like something we had in our back pocket um, in the event that it was a, an absolute must, then we could pull it out and say, okay, how far along in this 21 days are we? Let's book our flight based on that. We wanted to like try to go with what we had been told from the woman at the very top of this whole chain that yes, your Canadian records are fine. So we did not tell the new pet agent that we had a plan B ready to go. We just said, here's the Canadian records. Can you help us? At this time, we still hadn't booked flights to leave the country because we were like, what happens if they show up with all of her records and then someone in the office says, no, this is not good. We need the Malaysian vaccine records, you know? So we weren't booking the flights, but Jeff was looking into airlines that had good cancellation policies or transferring the date of your flight, you know, that kind of thing. So while he was taking care of all of that, we, I was connecting with this pet agent and she basically said to us, I cannot guarantee you that when we show up with your dog's paperwork, that it will be accepted. But what I can tell you is we have helped multiple other foreigners who brought their pet on vacation leave the country with the vaccine records from their home country. So as soon as we heard that, we were like, okay, you're the one that's gonna help us. You've done this before, so it, we just felt much more comfortable. Having said that, it was very expensive. We ended up paying hundreds of dollars to get this pet agent to act on our behalf. What that included was they took all of Marley's paperwork, went to that government office and made sure that everything was in order. What they also do is they take the dog a few days before your trip and they take them to a vet. The vet gives them a once over and gives them an all clear that they're good to travel and also does one last treatment um, on the dog. That's basically what you're paying them for is for them to pick up your dog, take them to the vet, get these treatments done, bring them back, get all the paperwork, take them to this other office and then deliver you the final paperwork. Super expensive, such a headache. But literally we decided we were gonna pull the trigger and go ahead and do that. And then um, Jeff at that time felt like, okay, let's book the flights. We feel like we're comf confident enough with what she's told us that we can book our flights. So we did. Um, and really, truly, it was like four days before our flight when we finally got the all clear, like you got the green light, paperwork is in your hand to take this dog on an airplane. And we never once had to pull out the card saying, hey, here's the Malaysian pet passport. We never once had to do that. All that being said, getting your dog out of Malaysia is no joke. I don't know why everyone that I spoke with prior to this lovely woman who was able to help us, I don't know why they were all saying, sorry, you have to get the Malaysian vaccine records. I don't know why they were all saying you have to treat your dog as though it's a Malaysian dog. I don't, like, I don't know why they were all giving me the same story when clearly that's wrong information. And when I was telling them, I spoke with so-and-so at this office who told me otherwise. I don't know, I don't know what that was all about. I don't know why my pet agent stopped returning my calls and stopped getting back to me. I don't, like I, we have no idea what was going on. All we know is that this great company ended up helping us. And even though it was a crazy amount of money, it was a relief. We were able to get everything we needed to get onto the airplane with the dog. So if you have to leave Malaysia for any reason with your pets, just beware. Just have all of this information ready to go so that you are prepared to fight an uphill battle. And I will link in the description box below. I know this is probably just for a rare handful of you, but I'm gonna put in the description box the website of the pet agency that we ended up using that helped us get Marley out of Malaysia because clearly they know what they're doing. They've done it many times before before and they're really good at it. So we got her here. She's with us in Italy. She's a loving life. So that's it. That's our crazy journey. I hope it never happens to any one of you, truly. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video, you guys. We'll see you next time at I Am Loved.